Hey, David Brewster here with an episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Rainbow, and we're going to be talking about Richie Blackmore again. And so far on this channel, I have put together a three-for-all for Richie, where we looked at some of his licks. There's also the Chords of Deep Purple. But I've had a lot of requests to feature, you know, some music and examples from Rainbow. And Rainbow is essential. You know, they formed in England in 1975. Shortly after Richie left Deep Purple, Tommy Bolin kind of stepped in, you know, to his absence in Deep Purple. And Rainbow was technically Ronnie James Dio with Ronnie's band Elf, you know, with uh, Richie Blackmore on guitar. That was the original lineup with that first album. And then after that first album, he fired the whole band, but he kept Ronnie. And then they just started this constant flow of personnel changes. You know, you've had Ronnie James Dio, Graham Bonnet, Joe Lynn Turner, and a whole bunch of different vocalists. You know, that's kind of the tr like the holy trinity of rock, you know, and hard rock vocalists. Ronnie James Dio, Graham Bonnet, and Joe Lynn Turner. So like I said, Rainbow's essential. You know, they definitely came out and they influenced and saturated the entire rock, hard rock, and metal, you know, genre or whatever. And a lot of it had to do with Richie and Ronnie James Dio working together initially because, you know, the sound was very impactful. But then lyrically, you know, Ronnie was singing about witches and warlocks and sorcery and all this different stuff. And there was this mystic, you know, kind of sound or influence in their music. And that literally saturated everything. You know, everybody from Iron Maiden and, you know, groups like that, you know, when they were younger or whatever, they heard Rainbow and it inspired them and influenced them. And you can hear that influence directly. As far as the music in this episode, you know, Rainbow's had eight studio albums and a lot of live albums and compilations that have been released and they've sold over 30 million albums worldwide. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to span their whole career. Now, of course, I'm going to be leaving a lot out because I can't cover you know, eight albums worth of music, but I am going to bounce through some of their early stuff and some of the more recent stuff too. So here we go. All right, with the opening, that's Rock Fever from Straight Between the Eyes, and it's something like this. <laughs> starts with uh, this E riff and it's kind of quiet and it slowly builds right here so it's just loosely based around E I guess loosely based around E7 because we're flirting with that D note back there too kick in and it moves to A and it kind of borrows that riff but now you're doing it like this and then right there so it kind of dips into the A blues scale just briefly there C right there. And just move to a big deep five, you know, power chord. You also hear him play with that sus four to D major briefly and then, you know, D five again. You hear the single note riff. So it's like, you know, C to D and grab that G. And then G, G sharp, A to C. Right back to that D power chord again. Do it again. And right there, it changes 
to this other riff like this. <laughs> flirting with this E and then that D to E and grab that G note and kind of do a slight bend grab that E open again D to E and then you're gonna grab A to G right there <laughs> back to that C note and then go right back to the verse. That's technically the chorus, but it's leading back into the verse part. That song is killer though. Okay, up next to the very famous Man on the Silver Mountain from the Rainbow album. And I'm hearing this like it's finger picked or maybe hybrid picked because I'm hearing kind of a pick and finger, you know, kind of manipulation. And it has that real snappy kind of bright sound like this. <laughs> partial chord riffs, think of Smoke on the Water and all those songs. And here it's basically flirting with G minor 7, you know, kind of, but you're doing... So right there you're grabbing the root note G. You know, and you're kind of grabbing those three partial chords right there. And occasionally he's grabbing that root note again. Grab that partial C to partial uh, B flat. Do it again. Right there, you're moving from that partial G to partial F to partial E flat. So it's all partial chords with that G root note occasionally. And I'm, once again, I'm kind of hearing that kind of finger plucked, you know, attack. up is Run With The Wolf from the Rising album and once again you can kind of hear this funky kind of double stop you know hybrid hybrid picked idea like this. <laughs> starts with this opening line right here. Kind of loosely based around A minor. Maybe starting on that E note there. Like that. And then grab the low E open to that uh, G right there on the third fret. And then once again, I'm hearing this hybrid pick kind of funky guitar riff like this. partial C, partial D, pull off to that partial C, move back to that partial A, and then a partial G with the open strings. So there's a lot happening right there in just the span of like one bar of music. <laughs> single A to single D, or I'm sorry, single C to single D on the A string. And do that again. And right there you're going to do the open, uh, the open 
open strings for that partial G. And you're gonna come down this, uh, you know, E. It's kind of mimicking like the beginning again. Kind of, but that E to D. And you're ending on that G note. And it goes right back to the riff right there. Next to the song Catch the Rainbow from the Rainbow Album, and this totally sounds like a variation of Little Wing. There's a lot of Hendrixisms floating around, but it's really cool. Something like this. <laughs> much like Little Wing, and it starts right here. And you're really just strumming that giant E minor 7 right there. You just hold the B note right there on the A string, and everything else is an open string. And then you're going to hear this little slide. these Hendrixy, you know, kind of double stops, this R&B and Motown kind of thing. So it moves to G, you kind of do a thumb wrap there, and then you're doing these little kind of hammer on and pull offs with those double stops. And then you hear it move to A minor. And then and he's really just sliding uh, that partial chord there in the middle to E minor 7. Does this open string lick again? And it moves to C. And then to A. And there's something weird happening. I think there actually are two guitar parts, you know, like uh, kind of overdubbed together. But there, I'm hearing this. And there's something else going on in the background there. And then eventually it moves to E. stops right here ends on this uh, C major 7. So it's a really cool guitar part, but you can totally hear that little wing influence. So check that song out if you haven't heard Catch the Rainbow before. Here's another Hendrix inspired song. This is Rainbow Eyes from Long Live Rock and Roll. And if you put a capo on the first fret and play through this guitar part, it sounds exactly like Rainbow Eyes, like this. <laughs> capo there on the first fret. So this is an F minor, technically, but you're treating it like it's E minor because of the capo. But the low E open, and then you're doing this kind of, it's almost like Hey Joe, just a little bit different. Like that. And I'm also starting that with my index finger, moving to my middle finger on the G, and then I'm switching to my index finger so I can play this A minor 6 that's waiting here. So you're doing... C. Keep in mind, you know, we're using the capo, so it's actually going to feel like C sharp, but think of C with the capo. partial chords, it's like a partial uh, F, and then you're going 
going back to this, which is really unusual. And then you're basically grabbing this D and sliding that. And then you're moving to C right there. And then you're grabbing uh, the sus uh, four right there, and you're in a, or I'm sorry, sus two, and that kind of like that D note. Even though it's technically, you know, C sharp and that's a D sharp, but we're thinking of the capo. But think of C and that C sus two right there. And then you're sliding that up a whole step. And then you're going to end with, it's basically a D over F sharp, you know, with that thumb wrap. And at the end, you actually want to add that sus four right there. And then end with that F sharp right there, moving back to D major. That's a really interesting, you know, guitar part. I love that. Save the best for last. This is Still I'm Sad, which is technically a Yardbird song, and Rainbow covered this song twice. It's on their 1975 album Rainbow, and it's also from their 1995 album uh, Stranger in Us All. And I'm not really sure where this came from, because this isn't from the Yardbirds, you know, song, but uh, it's really cool. And the intro goes on for over a minute, so I'm just focusing on my favorite part of the intro, but it's really cool, like this. <laughs> B major and then right here you're basically playing this F sharp 11 and eventually you hear the low E open there but uh, that guitar part's so cool it's like modern classical music or something it's really really interesting episode of chord play with the chords of rainbow and there's just something about Richie Blackmore and I was thinking about that you know when I was putting this episode together and he just has this mystique and this mystery you know about him and he's been on the scene for a very long time and there are books and interviews and all this stuff you know that go back you know a long way decades and decades but there's still this kind of mysterious allure about him and his music and whether it's deep purple or rainbow or whatever um there's just something really interesting about him. He's so unique and such an interesting, you know, guitar personality or music, you know, personality. So uh, definitely I'm a huge, you know, Richie Blackmore fan, regardless if it's Deep Purple or Rainbow or whatever he's doing. And I think this lesson kind of shows that he definitely kind of served things up a little differently with Rainbow. He played differently than he did in Deep Purple or with other groups and stuff. And I like Rainbow. I like the fact that it has this mystique and this kind of dark side. And eventually they did become a little more 
kind of radio friendly or whatever, but I love the early stuff, you know, from the 70s. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content material. Thank you.